Hey guys, Lighten here, and thank you for checking out this video. It fills me with such hope that you would do so, but I am also filled with such despair because this entire month I'm going to be dedicating to Danganronpa. That's right, Danganroktober, as I'm calling it, is going to be everything Danganronpa related. So, of course, I'm going to have to start with the first game that ever got released that started this whole franchise. So let's see if Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc is worth it. Danganronpa is a series that has many different games, books, mangas, and even animes attached to it. I'm looking at the first game in the series, Trigger Happy Havoc, which was released in 2010 in Japan and in English in 2014, four years later. This game is a visual novel, which is the same genre as 999, which I've also done a review on, so you should totally check that out. Even though it shares the same genre, it is very different from 999 because this is a murder mystery game, not an escape room game. You play as Makoto, a student that is just about to start his first year at Hope's Peak Academy. To say this school is elitist is a bit of an understatement. In order to get in, you have to be an ultimate. Ultimates are the absolute best in an area of life. If you fall into this category, the school will scout you and invite you to be part of their classes. Makoto though is a little different. He actually won a lottery to get in, which makes him the ultimate lucky student. Stepping into the school on his very first day, he passes out. Awakening in a class, he soon finds out that he and the other students are trapped in a school and the only way to get out is to kill another student and get away with murder? But where are the students in the other years? Why aren't the police coming to help? Why are some of these rooms locked? Why is a little bear called Monokuma the headmaster? It looks to me that you might be the ultimate unlucky student. Danganronpa is a visual novel game, so it is filled to the brim with story. There is so much that you'll be reading and listening to in the course of this game. The game is broken up into three main parts. The first is the daily life, where you'll be spending quite a bit of your time. Here, you'll get to chat with the different characters, learn their backstories, try and figure out the main mystery that is going on, have some fun because there's plenty of jokes and laughs to be had, and it's just an overall pretty good laid back experience until somebody is murdered. When a character is murdered, you will enter investigate mode. It is here that you will talk to witnesses for their alibis, gather clues, and check out the crime scene. These become your truth bullets that you will use in the third section, the class trial. It is here that it all comes together. You will talk to your classmates and put forth evidence and listen to what other people have to say and play a bunch of mini games in order to solve the murder. Those truth bullets I mentioned are used to show the flaws in another person's argument in order to prove a point. All in the name of justice, but if you cannot solve the murder, then everyone except the murderer will be killed and the killer gets to leave and go and live whatever kind of life they want. This is the main reason why people kill. Everybody is trapped inside of Hope's Peak Academy and the only way to get out is to get away with one of those murders. To make it even better, Monokuma will also turn up after every murder and give you a motive, further incentive to go out and kill somebody. These are very, very different from one another. One is money, another one is threatening your loved ones. So who wouldn't want to try and kill somebody to try and get out in order to try and find their loved ones and see if they can save them? There is a lot of crazy stuff happening and all of these murders and all of these motives and everything is tied into the larger plot as well, figuring out who Monokuma is, what's going on at Hope's Peak Academy and why are they barred in and all that kinds of stuff. Since we're locked in with them, we may as well talk about the characters. Each one of them is an ultimate and they have a quirk about them making every one of them unique. Some of them I like and others I don't. With Makoto, our main character, he is pretty bland but fairly optimistic. He is alright, I like him for the most part. Chihiro is the ultimate programmer but she does have an inferiority complex where she doesn't feel like she is worthy or strong enough to be part of the group. I really like her and the struggles that she goes through in the game. I really enjoyed her backstory and her growth through it. 
Yasuhiro is the ultimate clairvoyant and is one of the most annoying characters in the game. He is dumb and stalls investigations with his stupid questions. Like at one point he thinks a character is dead but they're standing there in the trial so you have to prove to him that they aren't a ghost. So dumb. Toko, the ultimate writing prodigy, is another character that I don't like, though a large portion of the people on the internet do. I don't see it. She has little self-esteem and thinks people are insulting her all the time, even when they're being nice to her. And her character developments are also annoying, but they're spoilers so I can't mention them now. She was the second worst character for me behind Yasuhiro. From bad to great, Kyoko is the ultimate question mark. I can't tell you what she is because that's a spoiler. She is calm, cool, and doesn't take any crap. I like her because she's actually doing something in the game and she helps us out with the different investigations and she's trying to solve the larger mystery. Byakuya is probably on par as my favorite character in the game. He is the ultimate affluent prodigy, born into high wealth and set to take over the largest, most powerful family company in the world. So that makes him an asshole. He thinks he is better than everyone and it is great, especially in the few times where he doesn't know something, so how could he be wrong? Now that I've introduced you to some of these characters, let's talk about how the game plays out. Because a lot of the time in this game is spent in the daily life portion of it, you'll be talking and interacting with these guys quite a bit. Because of that, most of these characters, if not all of them really, go through some kind of character growth before the end of the game. Even though some of them will die before the end of the game, they all still get some kind of growth and some kind of attention put towards them. Also, you have the opportunity to have free time, which is your choice of spending some time with one of the characters to get to know them a little bit better. Because you'll be spending time with all these characters, they don't know what the main mystery of the game is either, so you will not get much information as to what the bigger picture is going on until you finish a class trial. That's pretty much only where the main plot is at the end of the class trial and the start of the new uh, day. That, that's about it. A lot of this uh, is slowly trickled towards you and it seems to be the characters are the main focus point. That and the murders and the investigations. And the overall story seems to be put in a little bit afterwards. Uh, it's not bad by any means, it just feels a little bit uh, uneven when it comes to the mysteries, murders and the main story. There are six chapters in the game, so six trials, and as you get to do your investigation before the trial, you can usually figure out what happened before you even get to the class trial section. Well, mostly. Two cases, I would say, are very hard, especially when one trial holds back a vital clue until during the trial, making it hard to solve otherwise. That being said, I did solve most of the murders pretty quickly. I may not have got all the details correct, but I guessed how they died and usually narrowed it down to one to two suspects before the trials even began. That meant during the trials, I was just trying to prove my theories, and that made them a little bit annoying as I knew what I wanted to say and what was going to happen, I just had to prove it to the other people. Sometimes at an exhausting length as well. And I understand doing that in the first case, but by the sixth one, man, it should have been harder by then. Even though I may have guessed a lot of the trials, the main story has a lot of twists and turns that I did not guess and I did not see coming. I had a few theories from the start of the game as to what was going to happen and all of them were wrong, which I was pleasantly surprised because I'm like, yay, I couldn't guess that at the very least. That main mystery is what compelled me to keep playing. I really wanted to know what was going on at Hope's Peak Academy. I also liked more than half the cast, so I really wanted to see what happened to them. And I was really sad when some of them die. I was like, damn it, I really like these people. Even playing the investigations was fairly fun, even though they were a little frustrating because I thought they were a bit too easy and I'd figured out everything or just about everything that was going on in them before the trial even started. So it was a bit more of a slog to get through. The only trial that I really enjoyed was the fifth one because I had an aha moment. It was like most of the way through the trial before it finally clicked in my brain and I had remembered something and I was like, oh no way, if that's true, that's really, really cool. 
and it turned out to be true as well and I thought that was a really really cool part it was one of my favorite parts of the story I don't want to get into any spoilers or anything but I thought it was really really clever and it was really well done in the trial and it was one of the few trials that I had no idea what was who the murder was or who the who was going on so it was the only class trial that I was really stumped in until I had that like whoa that's crazy if that's true moment you may have noticed the graphics to the game and in a word they are interesting everything is hand drawn and has this paper feel to it it's really strange and at first I wasn't really liking it because everything has this weird disjointed look and it doesn't feel like they're kind of together but it's consistent throughout the entire game so I got used to it and I kind of warmed up to it the characters have plenty of sprites to show what emotions and there are even some special pictures of certain moments of the game in order to show them off the voice acting is pretty good in both English and Japanese. I personally played it in English for the most part, and I hate those people that say you have to play the game in Japanese. That, those people are elitist, you do not need to. The English cast does a good job. The music is very good as well, with that daily life theme being all cool and just like feeling like, oh yeah, everything's gonna be okay. Then Monokuma's theme, which just has this weird snark to it. I love that investigation theme because it's just really, really cool. And the song Distrust, when everything is like going bad and you just like don't know who to trust. Oh, that song is so good. The game is fairly long as well, being about 30 hours, dependent on how long you spend in the daily life sections, exploring and talking to people and getting to know them. You can skip a lot of that kind of stuff or just speed through it if you don't want to know any part of the story. Also, the trials could be a little bit different in terms of length if you're having difficulty with them and you can't figure out the next part or the, like the answer to that particular section. So those can change, but 30 hours is pretty good. The only problem is, is that after you finish the game, there is very, very, very little replay value in this. There is an alternate joke ending that you can get in the fifth trial, and that's about it for alternate endings. If you play the game again, everything remains the same. You know who the murder is going to be, you know who the uh, victim is going to be, you know how they did it, nothing changes. The only reason that you might want to replay the game is to go and spend different free time events with different people, getting to know them a little bit more. So maybe in one playthrough you want to get to know Byakuya, and then in the second playthrough you really want to get to know Toko, and then you can, and that's really the only reason to replay the game. This game was also ported to the PS Vita and PlayStation 4 in Danganronpa 1.2 Reloaded. It came with the second game as well. There are a few quality of life improvements like sprite upgrades, a few changes to the dialogue and stuff like that, but for the most part it is the same game. The main addition that they did was a mode called School Mode which is you unlock after you finish the main game. In this, it's a laid back version of the game. You are given 50 days to do some menial tasks for Monokuma, but that's not the main focus. The main focus is that there are no killings, so you get to spend time with all of the different characters. All of those free time events from the main game, you can now go through with these guys and get to know everybody a little bit better. What's more is that after you get to know everybody and you've maxed out like your friendship with them, then you can make them fall in love with you with these little love heart tokens that you can get. If you reach 10, then the character gets a special ending at the end of the 50 days. And these endings usually just sort of round off or finish off or just have some more story to the main story that they had going for them in the main game. I think these are great additions. I really, really liked it. All the different story, all the different character developments and growths are really good. And I think it was a great addition to the game, especially because these kinds of modes are stapled in the other two games. So having it retroactively put into the first game, fantastic, great addition. I've talked a lot about the characters and story and different modes, but I haven't actually mentioned the mini games that you play during the trial. There are quite a few of them, with the main one being the non-stop debate. In this, everybody is talking one after another, and you have to see one of their lies or contradictions and shoot it with the right rebuttal. No, you're wrong! Sometimes there is noise in the way which you have to shoot to get rid of first before you can do your rebuttal. This is my favorite minigame of the trials. You have to listen to what everybody is saying, figure out which of these things could be the lie, and then find out the right truth to counteract those lies. It is really involved and sometimes it's not super obvious as to what the answer will be. 
I think it's a lot of fun and I just think it's really, really well done. Next we have the Hangman's Gambit. Shoot letters? It's Hangman. It's pretty boring. It's probably the most boring mini game of the entire bunch. Next we have Panic Talk, which is a rhythm game where you shoot down the opponent's arguments. It's pretty basic where you're just tapping the button in the right time, but it's all right. Lastly, we have the closing arguments, which lays out the entire case, but there are parts missing. We have to find the pictures at the bottom of the screen, put them in the missing spots in order to make the case make sense. This sounds fairly easy, but the pictures themselves aren't very well detailed and they can be interpreted in different ways. So there's quite a few times where I thought I was picking the right thing and it would be wrong and it would frustrate me to no end. Overall, these mini games aren't too crazy, but they all add something different to the trials in order to keep them fresh throughout the game. Now, normally I would go into the spoiler section towards the end of my review, but I'm going to be doing something a little bit different in Danganronktober. Because I have so many things to talk about, that are spoiler related, I'm going to make a separate video that will be released in a few days, or maybe it's already released if you're watching this in the future. So check that out if you want to see my spoilery thoughts on Danganronpa. In my opinion, I think that Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc was worth it. It is such a fun game to play. I really, really enjoyed the characters, even though I did not like some of them. The artwork is great, the gameplay is fun, and that story is really compelling. It does have its ups and downs, just like any story does, and I did have a few problems with the ending, but overall, I thought it was really good, and I was intrigued for the entire thing. I do wish that the cases were a little bit harder and a little bit more involved because I found them a little bit too easy. Maybe I'm just channeling my inner Byakuya and I'm just like elitist and I'm looking down upon this game because I felt so high and mighty because I figured out so many things before the game told me. But the main mysteries, I didn't guess. So at least there's that. It didn't, I had no idea what the twists were going to be, honestly. I can't wait to play this second game and just continue the Danganronpa universe because this game does end on a cliffhanger, so gotta find out what's gonna happen next. So guys, tell me what you thought about Danganronpa. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you call it Trigger Happy Havoc? Because that is a lot of words and most people I know just call it Danganronpa 1. So <laughs> maybe I should just start doing that. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I really, really like this t-shirt that I got online and it's got all the main characters and like this nice fun chibi art style. I think it's really, really cool. Also, thank you for uh, the hair kitty. Thank you. I'm a main character now because I've got an antenna. <laughs> um, if you do write any comments down below that are spoiler related, just remember to put spoiler tags because I know I wouldn't have I wouldn't have liked if this game got spoiled for me. Or you can hold on to those thoughts for the uh, video that I'm going to release after this, which is going to be all to do with spoilers. So maybe write it in there. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Special thanks to my girlfriend Kitty for doing this antenna. You are incredible. Thank you so much. It took us like an hour to figure out how to do this because all the tutorials online are for wigs. I have real hair, so it's, <laughs> it was great. But we got there and I'm so happy with it. And thank you so much. I love you so much. In order to prove that somebody is lying, it takes a lot of bit. It takes a lot of bits. This is the main re- I should probably, I should probably read the script and just- uh...